Here we go, guys. Next very basic Bible. Going to hit my Bible uh, quick read. Going to hit my timer for eight minutes. Matthew chapter 16, verse 9. Do you still not understand? Don't you remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many basketfuls you gathered? At the time, they didn't remember. Or the seven loaves for the 4,000 and how many basketfuls you gathered? How is it you don't understand that I was not talking to you about bread? But be on your, I'm not sure if Jesus said it like that. He might have, he might have said it nicer. I'm, <laughs> but be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he was not telling them to be on their guard against the yeast used in bread, but against the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Okay, so now they get it. Good, good. Okay. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? The disciples replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Who do people say the Son of Man is? Lots of answers. But who, what about you, he asked, who do you, my disciples, say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, or whatever you loose on earth, loosed in heaven. Look at this. What? Whatever you bind will be or will have been bound in heaven. If you bind something on earth, it's already been bound in heaven. Will have been loosed in heaven. Okay, grammar is a little spotty, but that's not the worst thing ever. You know. I will give you the key. Okay. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was a Messiah. The father revealed it to his disciples. Uh, blessed are you for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. But hey, don't go telling people that I'm the Messiah. He's been remembered. He's already told tons of people who he heals. Don't tell people who I am. <laughs> From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life dude sweet but peter took him aside and began to rebuke him never lord he said this shall never happen to you peter's like you're the messiah and then he's like rebuking jesus the heck jesus turned and said to peter get behind me satan you are a stumbling block to me you do not have in mind the concerns of god but merely human concerns do not worry about what you will eat and drink about where you will live is life not more than food and clothing come on guys don't worry about him who can harm the body but worry about him who can kill and cast you into hell you can kill the body and the soul cast you into hell Wor worry about godly things not human concerns that's what i mean jesus has said this before already then jesus said to his disciples whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Jesus had just told them that he was going to die and rise. And they're like, you want us to take up a cross? Take up a cross means we're going to be crucified, Jesus. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? What can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Truly, I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So don't worry, guys. Be comforted. You will be rewarded if you follow me. Stop worrying about who's going to kill you. Stop worrying about, I'm going to the cross, and I'm going to be beaten up by elders. Don't worry about that. Take up your cross and die daily. I, you will be rewarded. Don't worry. 
After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up to a high mountain by himself. Okay, Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Okay, so three people, Peter, John, the brother of James, and James. That bro Okay, so John and James are brothers. You remember that from the beginning. He said he saw James and John in their fishing boat, and he told them to follow me, and James and John were brothers. Okay, sorry. So there's three people, Peter, James, and John. All right. Oh, he took, led them up to a high mountain by themselves. There, he was transfigured before them. Jesus' face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as a light. Just then, there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. It'd be crazy. Peter, Peter, said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He's probably talking about shelters for the Feast of Israel. There's a Feast of Israel where they built shelters out of sticks and they lived in them to remind them that they lived in the wilderness for 40 years when they came out of Egypt. That's probably what Elijah is talking about. I mean, Peter, that's probably what Peter is talking about. Peter knows that Elijah, Moses, Jesus, they don't need houses to live in. Um, while, he, while Peter was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. God interrupts Peter. Hey, we're going to build you shelters. This is my son. Whoa. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. Okay. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Remember, he's been telling them from that time on that I'm going to be raised from the dead. So the disciples asked him, why then did the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? I guess they just saw Elijah. Maybe that's why they're thinking about it. Jesus says, I'm going to be raised from the dead. Maybe Elijah's supposed to come. I'm not sure why his disciples said this. I'm not sure. Jesus replied, to be, Jesus knows why they ask, though. So, to be sure, Elijah comes and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come. Remember, Jesus said, if you can accept it, John the Baptist is Elijah. They did not recognize uh, him, but have done to him everything they wished. And the same, so they did to John the Baptist, everything they, they killed him. Okay. In the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands, I guess, the religious leaders. Okay, why then do the teachers of law say Elijah must come? The Son of Man is going to suffer at the teachers of the law hands. He's already said that. Okay, wait, there you go. <laughs> I saw it out of the corner of my eye. All right, guys, let's hit up the next uh, very basic Bible. We'll see you on the next one.